Yeah, there it is. Okay. Hi, I'm Dave Shigoda from We Energies. Um, we're an electric and gas utility based in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, serving mainly southeastern Wisconsin, but other portions of eastern Wisconsin and the Upper Peninsula, Michigan. Um, we have um, 12 CNG stations in our area, and we'll get to that. I'll show you where they are. We've been operating them for about 15 years. And I'm going to back up a little bit from the last presentation. This is a little bit more summary, um, just about CNG and vehicles in general. Um, I want to cover, you know, why would anybody want a uh, natural gas vehicle? Who would use them? Um, you know, where, where can you get the fuel? Things like that. So, some of this has been covered, so I'll skim over parts of it. But um, they basically run like a, a regular vehicle running on gasoline, only they run on compressed natural gas. Um, some, of the, some of the vehicles can run on both. You just hit a switch on the dashboard and you can go from gasoline to compressed natural gas or back. So um, if you run out of compressed natural gas and you're on your way to someplace out of town, you just push the button and run on your gasoline. There's other vehicles, though, that are just dedicated compressed natural gas. And those, are, those tend to be fleet-type vehicles or commuters that, commuting vehicles that don't leave the area. Um, so there's a couple ways to go. Um, Usually it's a little bit cheaper to go to dedicated, but it depends. It all depends on how big your tanks are and things like that. Um, and then the cylinders are pressurized up to 3,600 psi. Um, so the tanks have to be certified and be uh, quite, quite sturdy. Um, and there's, the tanks come with a, they're equipped with an in-tank solenoid valve that'll cut off the flow of gas if the system is compromised or when the engine's turned off. Um, price of CNG across the, the nation's about $1.50 a gallon, roughly. It might be a little higher now. These, this presentation was done a little while ago. Um, most of the use is for, um, high mileage type fleets like shuttle buses, delivery trucks, taxis, transportation buses. And now in, in the last year or so, more over the road trucks. Um, <clears throat> our biggest user is a, a trucking company that continually goes from Green Bay to Chicago, Chicago and back. Um, and they've got a fleet of I think 10 large trucks with Kenworth 440s in them. And, uh, they go through a lot of fuel, get about six miles to the gallon, and, and they really like it. Um, natural gas is safe, relatively safe. It's lighter than air, so if you do get a leak, it goes up into the atmosphere. Uh, narrow range of combustion, high temperature of ignition. Um, a lot of people get into this because they want to make a statement. You know, they, they're, um, they'd rather the money go to North America rather than the Middle East for their fuel. Um, and then you can also get a preferred parking space at, uh, at some of the lead buildings out there. Um, oh, and I guess I talked about this a little bit. You know, reduce our, if you use CNG, it'll reduce our dependence on foreign oil imports. 60% um, of our oil is imported here, and natural gas is pretty much domestic. Um, and then it's uh, 50 to 60 percent of the air pollution that we have in the air right now is from the transportation industry. And southeastern Wisconsin is in an uh, ozone non-attainment area. And um, CNG also reduces the CO2 about 20 percent. Um, also, uh, companies can, um, if they have a CNG fleet, they can claim that on their um, they can get a tax credit for it because they get, they're, they're not polluting the air as much if they're in a non ozone non attainment area. Um, and natural gas burns clean, and um, there's also the potential for biogas, um, which then creates even less CO2. 
Um, and then we went through these numbers already. Those, those, those are more out of date than the one that, the one that Bob just gave earlier. Um, skip over that. Um, so there's different markets. We talked about this a little bit. Even forklift trucks, airport ground transport equipment is a good target area. Uh, for light duty, the, the Honda Civic's available. It uh, comes from the factory as a dedicated CNG um, vehicle. It's, there's about a $7,000 premium to get it, and you have to be patient if you order one because they only produce them at certain times of the year, and they produce them in limited numbers, so you can't just walk <coughs> to, your, to your nearest dealer and, and bring one home. you got to plan for them. Um, and then you got conversions available. Um, do large trucks. Uh, for our area in the Milwaukee area, there's Hall Chev Chevrolet um, does conversions. Um, I think it's now called Hall Automotive, but it's the same phone number, same location. And then there's also there's others here. I'll get to. <laughs> um, and then it's just, here's a little bit more on the Civic. Back in 2009, it was determined it was the cleanest vehicle on earth. Um, and then here's some conversion options, uh, Culp Energy Solutions. How about that? <laughs> right in the area. They're uh, trained uh, through the IMPCO program to uh, do conversions, um, plus several others. I think IMCO is one of the, the biggest uh, ones available are the biggest companies that can do this. And you got Cummings and other systems. And uh, We Energies has, uh, our company has about 30 vehicles, mostly Ford vans, E250 and E350 vans, uh, dedicated CNG vehicles. And then there's lots of car companies and vehicle companies offer CNGs or natural gas vehicles. They're not, most are not in the U.S. at this point, but they're working toward that. Honda's the only one right now for car, you know, for commuter cars. Um, this is a very common website that you can get to. There's several ways to get to it, but it shows all the CNG fueling sites in the nation. You can easily zoom in, so if you're in a certain town, if you're in Appleton, you can zoom in and find out where the, the one station is in Appleton. Um, Real easy to use. It shows the price. The price might be a little out of date, but it'll tell you when it was last updated at each each uh, gas station. And here's a map of the We Energies supplied stations. There's 12 of them in our area. Uh, most of them in southeastern Wisconsin. The farthest north one is in Appleton. The farthest south is Kenosha. The farthest west is Waukesha. The one in Madison is not ours. It's belongs to Madison Gas and Electric, and I believe that um, it's not open to the public. But there's, I think, two more being built there in the near future. Um, the city of Milwaukee is building two in uh, Milwaukee also, two large stations. Um, out of these 12 stations, um, we maintain all 12 of them, but we only own nine of the compressor stations. Um, and then six of those nine are at on our sites, on our property, but they're all open to the public. Just pay with a Visa or MasterCard. And here's some examples, local success stories, Outpost, Natural Foods has a fleet for trucking. Um, Transit Express is in the lower left-hand corner. It's a fleet of vans, uh, taxi service for people who have mobility issues, plus they have um, charter buses and vans and trucks and things. And they have their own station there, both slow fill and fast fill. Um, airport par parking, they're a huge user of um, compressed natural gas. And then in the lower right is a picture of one of the pumps. They're very easy to use. Um, usually when somebody in our area gets a new vehicle, they'll find out who I am and what my phone number is. They call me and I go and help them fuel up for the first or second time and uh, it's pretty, it's very easy. It's, um, you don't need any real special training. There's instructions on the pump. 
Um, but the first time through it, it's fine. You know, I can show them how to use it. Uh, here's another example of a, a refuse truck. Those across the across the country, um, this is a very fast-growing area. They not only is the fuel cheaper, but they're actually quieter, and they're going through your neighborhood at 6 a.m. They're um, significantly quieter than a diesel-powered refuse truck, and it's because it's. It's just the way the natural gas works in the system. Um, this is our probably our largest user. They have 10 large trucks, uh, paper transport. Um, AT&T has a 30 or 40 of these vehicles out there, and they use it as a PR. Um, you know, it's their way of showing that they're they're clean and green. Um, here's this is right off their truck, and it's actually a very uh, a good uh, poster on their truck. Tells the driving range how much 25 gallon equivalent gasoline um, miles per gallon, blah blah blah. It goes through all all the um, the benefits of having it. Uh, so, just to summarize, it's low cost of fuel, domestic fuel supply. You can get funding through the next speaker, the next two speakers. Um, they're your uh, conduit for funding if you want to put in stations or do some conversions to your fleet. And, and that would be Clean Cities and then um, the State Energy Office. And there's the website for Wisconsin Clean Cities. And there's another picture of our pump. And that's it. Thanks. Thank you, Dave. Uh,